The countries involved in the invasion of Luxembourg were Nazi Germany, Luxembourg, France and Britain. The German force included 50,000 soldiers and 600 tanks. Within the German invading force was the 1st Panzer Division led by General Lieutenant Friedrich Kirchner, the 2nd Panzer Division led by General Lieutenant Rudolf Veil, and the 10th Panzer Division led by General Lieutenant Ferdinand Schall. These were under the main command of Heinz Guderian, who commanded the whole force of the invasion of all the Low Countries and France. The overall casualty number for the Germans is unknown. The defending Luxembourg force was commanded by Pierre Dupont and Emile Speller. Within the Luxembourg force was the Grand Ducal Gendarmerie. The Gendarmerie were military police which also performed civil acts. These were under the command of Captain Maurice Stein. As well as this, Luxembourg had a volunteer corps, which was commanded by Captain Alois Jacobi. The Grand Ducal Gendarmerie and the Luxembourg Volunteer Corps combined to make the Corps des Gendarmes et Volontaires, which were commanded by the Major Commandant Emil Speller. This totaled to 425 soldiers and 246 gendarmes. The casualties for Luxembourg were 7 wounded and 76 captured. The French forces involved in the invasion of Luxembourg were led by General Robert Petiet. Within the French forces, there was the 3rd Light Cavalry Division, led by General Robert Petiet, the 1st Spahi Brigade, led by Colonel Jufault, and the 2nd Company of the 5th Armoured Battalion. This force totaled to around 18,000 soldiers, of which 5 were killed. As well as the French and Luxembourg forces, Britain played a slight role in the invasion of Luxembourg. The British forces were commanded by Air Marshal Arthur Barrett, who sent out the 226th Squadron of the RAF, which was a bomber squadron. In total, around one person was killed, two people were captured, and one aircraft was shot down, but with many more damaged. The main reason why Luxembourg was really weak, other than it being a small country, was due to the Treaty of London, which occurred on the 11th of May 1867. This made Luxembourg bound to neutrality. This meant that it had to be neutral in all conflicts and wars to its neighbours. To make sure Luxembourg would stay neutral, the west fortifications of Luxembourg City, often called the Gibraltar of the North, were demolished and never to be rebuilt again. As well as this, around 24 kilometres of underground fortifications and 4 hectares of defences, like casemates batteries and barracks were also destroyed. As part of the Luxembourg defence, the Luxembourg government created the Schuster Line, which were built along the borders with Germany and France. This contained 41 sets of concrete blocks and iron gates, 18 bridge blocks on the German border, 18 road blocks on the German border, 5 road blocks on the French border. The road blocks were set one mile inland in a zigzag pattern covered by barbed wire entanglements on either side. As well as this, nine radio outposts were erected along the German border with a central receiving station in the St. Esprit in Captain Stein's office in Luxembourg City. As the Corps des Gendarmes et Volontaires, the Luxembourg Army, had no pioneer or engineering units, the construction of the Schuster Line was done by civilian engineers. The radio outposts on the Schuster Line were manned by gendarmes. During the actual invasion by the Germans, the Schuster Line failed to slow the Germans as iron gates were knocked down and wooden ramps were built over the concrete blockades to drive over them. Some blockades were blown up and the majority of the roadblocks were easily pushed through. On the 7th of May 1940, Abwehr agents under the command of Oscar Riel infiltrated Luxembourg as tourists. Their aim was to seize key bridges over the Sauer, Moselle and Uhr rivers. However, their actions were noticed by Captain Ferdinand Archen, an undercover French intelligence officer stationed in Luxembourg who was posing as a wine merchant. He reported these findings to his superiors in Longwy and then this information was later passed to the Luxembourg authorities who ordered Captain Captain Stein to deal with the problem. At 2am on the 10th of May, Luxembourg authorities received the first report of exchanged fire when two gendarmes were ambushed near the German border by plain-clothed Abwehr agents. These Germans then retreated to Fells Mill near Gravenmarcher and were pursued by 20 Luxembourg volunteer soldiers who aimed to arrest them.
15 minutes later, at 2.15am on the 10th of May, soldiers stationed in Bu were attacked by German abwehr agents in civilian clothes. One Luxembourg soldier was badly wounded and one German abwehr agent was also badly wounded and later detained. In the early hours of the 10th of May, after 5th columnists severed the telephone wires between the capital and border posts, Abwehr agents gradually seized the radio stations, with the last station falling in Wasserbillig, which continued to transmit until the Germans breached the operating rooms. This is the last key activity that Abwehr agents completed before the invasion of Luxembourg. The night before, on the 8th of May, at 11pm, the Grand Ducal Government ordered for the first time that all doors of the Shuster Line will be shut, and only to reopen at 6am. In the afternoon of the 9th of May, a French intelligence officer in Clairvaux witnessed German troops preparing pontoon bridges in the Sauer. Later on the 9th of May, a German national gardener warned his Luxembourg employer, Carlo Tuck, an invasion was pending. Tuck then passed a warning to government officials. In the evening of 9th of May 1940, the Grand Ducal government came into possession of a document from a German divisional commander. This document, dated 23rd April 1940, contained the division's chief of staff's orders to various units to occupy strategic points in the country, and because of this, all border posts and gendarmerie stations were put on full alert. Later in the evening of the 9th of May, in Luxembourg City, gendarmes began to mobilise to defend public buildings and dispatched vehicle patrols to arrest fifth columnists. These were supporters of the Germans. Later in the evening of the 9th of May, Captain Arshan received a report that shots had been exchanged by Gendarmerie and German operatives in a remote farm in Moselle. Throughout the night of the 9th of May, Luxembourg custom officials at Wormeldange heard horses and soldiers across the Moselle, but due to heavy fog were unable to make out the German positions. At midnight, Captain Stein, Minister of Justice Victor Bodson, and the Police Commissioner Joseph Michael Wies held an emergency meeting. During this meeting, Victor Bodson requested that the capital be reinforced by gendarmes from the south, and told Joseph Michael Wies to forward this information to the capital's district commissioner to give the necessary orders. Wies later attempted to contact the district commissioner by phone but failed to reach him and the reinforcements never arrived. In the very early hours of the 10th of May, gendarmes at Dykirch were ordered to patrol the local railway bridge. At 3.15am, the steel doors and the Shuster line were closed after reports of German troop manoeuvres on the east side of the Oa, Sauer and Moselle border rivers. 15 minutes later, at 3.30am, Luxembourg authorities released interned French pilots and German deserters and the royal family evacuated from its residence in Colmarburg to the Grand Ducal Palace in Luxembourg City. Later, at 4am, German planes were spotted flying over Luxembourg City towards Belgium. The German invasion began at 4.35am on the 10th of May 1940. This involved the 1st, 2nd and 10th Panzer Divisions. The 1st Panzer Division invaded at Vianden, the 2nd Panzer Division invaded at Wallendorf Pont, and the 10th Panzer Division invaded at Echternach. Wooden ramps were used to cross the Schusterlein tank traps, and the iron gates were knocked over. Some gunfire was exchanged, but the Germans didn't face much resistance other than some destroyed bridges and landmines, as the majority of the volunteer corps stayed in their barracks instead of defending the front lines and border posts. As well as this, the border was only defended by a few soldiers who volunteered for guard duty and a few gendarmes. The resistance in certain areas was so weak that only a handful of Germans were needed to secure the bridge at Wormeldange as only two custom officers were there and all they did was demand they halt and didn't open fire. The Parle de Monash bridge over Sauer at Ettenach was quickly repaired by engineers of the Gross Deutschland Regiment allowing the passage of the 10th Panzer Division. Captain Arken repeatedly alerted his superiors at long way of the invasion, but his reports never reached the 3rd Army at Metz. General Charles Condé, the 3rd Army's commander, was unclear of the situation and at 5.30am dispatched aerial reconnaissance units to investigate. At 6am, the French 3rd Light Cavalry Division was ordered to intervene. 
By 6.30 a.m., the majority of the government, including Dupong and Bech, had evacuated the capital by motorcade to Esh at the border. Soon after, around 8 a.m., a group of 125 German Special Operations troops landed near Esh in Faisler Storch, small German liaison aircraft, with orders to hold the area until the main invasion force arrived. They faced little resistance, opposing only a few gendarmes who didn't fire. Soon after, at 8 a.m., elements of the French 3rd Light Cavalry Division under General Petiet, supported by the 1st Spahi Brigade under Colonel Dufault and the 2nd Company of the 5th Armoured Battalion, crossed the southern border to conduct a probe of German forces. These later retreated to the Maginot Line, with around five Spahis killed. Soon after, British Air Marshal Arthur Barrett, who was annoyed with the reluctance of the French Air Force, ordered a flight of ferry battle planes, single-engined light bombers, from the 226th Squadron to attack the German tank columns. By around 4 p.m., Luxembourg City had fallen. By 6 p.m., all of Luxembourg was under German control and the invasion had ended. This invasion lasted around 14 hours and ended in a German victory.